Hi there. This message is brought to you by House 316. God bless you as you listen. Welcome to House 316 School of Ministry. We are on the third module. Today, we are looking at the third module. And it's titled... Walking with God. Walking with God. Last week's school of ministry, we dealt with being saved, which was the first module. And we also look at the second module, which was breaking the chains of sin. And today, the third module, walking with God. So, we'll go straight on. Walking with God. God. Please briefly, b- before I start working with God, um, I-, I just want to answer a question which the Spirit of God dropped in my spirit that I should answer because uh, some people may be asking the same question. You know, last week, after looking at being saved, we also look at uh, breaking the chains. We said there's a difference between being saved and being born again. We saw the difference the Spirit of God showed us. We saw that repentance leads to salvation. And then we look at uh, breaking the chains, which is sin. We define what sin is. We look at the different types of sins. We look at sin, transgression, and iniquity. And all that. So, there's a question that needs to be answered. And that is, does God listen to the sinner? To the sinner? If you have sin, will God listen to you? If you have iniquity, will God listen to you? So, um, please make sure that uh, you listen to module one and module two. This question is actually for the module one, uh, module two that we had before I go into module three. So, please listen carefully. I'm going to answer this question now. Isaiah chapter 59, verse one. Isaiah. Okay. 59 verse 1. It says, Behold, no, the, the other color is better now. Huh? Either you put, um, yeah, this is better. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, and it cannot, that it cannot save. No, his ear heavy that he cannot hear. So, it's not as if God does not hear. It does not, it doesn't mean that God does not have the hand to save. The next verse. Verse 2. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you. So that he will not hear. If you're a sinner, it is not as if God will not. God has a constant listening ears. What stops God from hearing you is your sin. And please, God is not afraid of sin. There's nothing God is afraid of. God is unafraidable if there's anything like that. So, but this is what sin does. Sin, in the real sense, look at it, okay? Look at it carefully. It is not really, really sin that stops God from hearing you. If it is sin, if you have sin, God cannot hear you. It means you cannot even repent. What if you have sin and you want to come and repent? Then go say, ah, this guy has sin, so no. No. You see, any time there's sin in you, There's guilt. There's disbelief. It is disbelief 
that stops you from talking to God and hence God will not hear you. Did you get the point? When you sin, you already have this consciousness that God will not hear you. That's called disbelief. That means you don't even believe that God will hear you. So sometimes when you even sin and you pray, God has even answered you. But because of your sin, the disbelief will not make you see that God has provided the answer already. So it is the disbelief, not just really see. Did you get that? Now we jump into our module for today, which is module three. Walking with God. First John chapter two, verse six. Spin. You need to be extra fast. First John chapter two, verse six. Don't forget the entire school of ministry is in series, is in a sequel. Okay? Now, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. When you are being saved, you become born again, you break the chains. The next thing is to walk as Christ walked. That means you have received the life of Christ Jesus. The major evidence that you have been saved or born again is that you walk with God. If we say you have been saved, that's module one, and you have broken the chain or the, the chains of sin have been broken, the evidence of these two is that you walk with God. If you say you are saved, then we should see you walking with God. You get that? And the major evidence that you are walking with God is that you live by faith. You live by faith. What is walking with God? Colossians chapter 1 verse 10. Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God what is walking with God is here is defined here when we say walking with God it means number one you walk worthy of the uh, another um um, version, give me NLTs so that you see um, this first line. Then we'll come back to it. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. Go back. Okay, did you see that? So that you may walk worthy of the Lord. Your lifestyle must please God. That's the meaning of walking with God. I can't be walking with you and I'm not pleasing you. We can't walk. Is that right? For us to walk together, I must please you. I must honor you. Okay? Fully pleasing him. It must, there must be the pleasing. Anytime you please God, you are walking with him. That's what it means. You're getting that, right? Being fruitful. One of the reasons is because it is one of the first commandments that God gave to man. He said, be fruitful. It's the first before he tells you to multiply, he tells you to be fruitful. So, being fruitful, manifesting the fruits of the spirit, producing results in your work, shows that you are working with God. The third, increasing in knowledge of God. Please, I think the line you need, the word you need to underline here is not knowledge. It's increasing. If you have knowledge of God and it's not increasing, you are not working with him. You are not. If I'm working with charity, today I know this about her. I'm still, she's still my friend. Next week, we're still working. Next one month, I begin to know more things about her, Right? 
One year, two years, I begin to know more things about her. The knowledge must be increasing. If you have constant and stagnant knowledge about God, you are not working with him. The knowledge must be increasing. You see? That's why working with God involves you listening to his word. So that that's the working. Please, use your Bible. Underline the word increasing. Just the increasing. It's not the knowledge. The most important word is the increasing. The knowledge must be increasing. What you knew about God last year must be increased this year. Is an evidence you are working with him. If not, you are not. There must be growth. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. A popular verse. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And if you go to um, uh, Genesis 5, where say Enoch walked with God and he was no more. So, how did he walk with God? By pleasing him. In walking with God, God must be pleased. As a matter of fact, it's a general principle. Anybody you're going to walk with, you must please the person. Is that okay? Praise God. Mark chapter 14, verse 36. This is a heavy verse. Heavy, very heavy verse. This is Jesus speaking. The Son of God. And he said, Abba Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Take this suffering away from me. That was God, uh, Jesus' desire. Jesus desired that this cup was taken away from him. But he said, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Working with God means alignment. Whatever is God's will becomes your will. You align to God's will. This was tough for Jesus. Yet, he said, let thy will. That's working with God. So, working with God means you align your will to his will. It's not more about your will. It is not more about your desires. It is his. Praise God. Working with God, as we can all see, means obedience. Means pleasing him. Means aligning to his will. And all these things must be done with faith. With faith and in faith. Praise God. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. We remember this story? We remember the story when Adam and Eve they ate that fruit. It's not apple. It's not apple. I don't know why we that love apples you want us to, to feel guilty of eating apple. It's not apple. Hmm? Did the Bible mention apple? Okay. We just imagine that it was apple. Because apple looks it looks tempting, right? Cool apple. And they heard the sound 
of the Lord. If my wife is coming, if I'm inside the parlor and my wife is coming, I know it's my wife. I know the sound of her footsteps. If it's a stranger, I know that it's not my wife. It's a stranger. So they heard the footsteps of God showing that they have been walking with God. Are you getting me? And the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid. God came to walk with them. And he didn't see them. God loves walking with men. This is from the beginning. As a matter of fact, this is the essence of creation. That he should have the pleasure of walking with us. Walking, W-A-L-K-I-N-G. Walking. You're getting me right? Walk. Not work. Is it Ghanaians that say work? I'm working here. Is that what they say? I'm working here. I'm working here. Then I met her. And then we became in love. Then we met our pastor. <laughs> they have so, such a sweet um, accent. They are brothers and we love them. When God came to the garden, what was he looking for? He was looking for a time to walk with Adam and Eve. Praise God. So now, listen. What is walking with God? Walking with God is also fellowship. Walking with God is obedience to his word, to his laws, to his commandments. Walking with God is alignment to his words, to his desires, to his will. Walking with God is also fellowship. Praise God. You guys will learn something now. You guys will learn something now. And it's applicable in relationship. Today you will see why, please, in case I forget, someone should whisper to me, you will see why communication is useless. All these people that come and meet me and say, we have problem with communication, communication. Well, I deal with you based on that knowledge, okay? But today you see that communication relationship is, use, is not important, it's useless. Where's the most important thing about relationship or marriage? Communication. Who told you is a lie? Today you see that it's not communication. Communication is not needed. Then what is needed? You see it. It's very good. Open your eyes. You see it. Instead of you uh, reading all the books about communication, there's something that you need to learn about. Not communication. If you know that, you don't need communication. Amen. So, God had a relationship with Adam and Eve. And that relationship is that he is their creator. And then he has a fellowship with them. The fellowship is working with them. Because working with God is fellowship. Do you get the point? What it means is that the essence of relationship is fellowship. The reason why there should be a relationship is because of fellowship. So can you see how you, you should analyze your partner in case you want to marry or something? Don't look at the relationship. Look at the fellowship. Is it going to be possible? Is it going to be conducive? Then you can have the relationship. We end up looking at and analyzing relationship. We don't look at the fellowship. Praise God. The question is, which one is more important? What is more important to God? Is it relationship with him or fellowship with him? You see, 
Relationship, let me tell you the difference. Relationship is, is, um, uh, is a connection. Fellowship is the result of the connection. Do you get? Which one God is more interested in? I have a son. My relationship with my son is that I am his father. He is my son. That's the relationship. That's what connects the two of us. No matter what happens, he's still my son. Even if I go and do, what is, what is it called? Disown. Even if I disown him, the, the relationship is there. He is my son. But when we fight, fellowship is broken. There is no more fellowship. But the essence of that relationship is the fellowship. We are made to eat the fruits of the relationship in fellowship. Are you getting the are you getting it? So the essence of working with God is not relationship, is fellowship. Is fellowship, intimacy. Praise God. Did you get the point? If you are saved and born again, you have a relationship with God. You are his son or daughter. He's your father. When you sin, the relationship will still be intact, but the fellowship will be broken. And when there is no fellowship, you will not benefit from the result of the relationship. The benefit is ceased. Are you getting me? If you fight with your father, he's still your father. Relationship is intact. You cannot call him and say, Daddy, I need this. That's the fellowship. So at this point, Adam and Eve, the fellowship was broken, but the relationship was still intact. The essence of walking with God is fellowship. He looks for the fellowship. So do you know my point? This is my point. If you are saved huh, and you are born again, you, are, you have a relationship with God. But God is looking for more, which is fellowship with him. So we are going to look at the ingredients of fellowship. But before then, the ultimate benefit of walking with God. What is the ultimate benefit of walking with God? Everyone look at it. See, there are many. There, there are many. If I leave you now, you can mention them. Right? You enjoy with him. He will guide you. He will preserve you. He will protect you. He will dash, dash, dash. Is that right? Everybody look at me. Please come. Uh, charity. Excuse me. Everyone look at it. I need to see this. I need to do this practically so that you see it. So now, this is Charity. She's my friend. And we have decided to walk together. Walk together. Walk together. When there's walking, it means a journey. And if it's a journey, there must be destination. If you get this one, oh God. If you get this, that's all. Walking with God. If we say walking, it means it's a journey. And any journey has destination. We are not walking with God without destination. There is a destination. So now, walking with God, I'm walking with her. To a destination. This, this is the journey. From there, you see, to enjoy your walk, it must be smooth. Once it's smooth, you are liking it, right? So we are walking to destination. Then we get to destination. So the question is, where is the destination? God bless you. Where is the destination? Please, everybody listen carefully. It's going to hit you. Walking with God is a journey. Journey to way. That's the destination way. Please, listen to this. It's deep. Walking with God is journey. And it leads to a destination. The destination is not heaven. The destination is God. 
that's the destination. So look at it. Everyone look at it. Come, 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 come. Everyone look at it. So I'm walking with God. I just said what the destination is what? God. So I'm walking with God. And I just said the destination is God. So the journey ends. Then I enter God. I'm with God. You see, that's why I got that revelation that heaven, that God is not in heaven. God is not seated in heaven. It is heaven that is in God. God is so powerful that he cannot create something and be inside. And if that is true, it means he was actually somewhere before he created heaven and enters it. What is not possible? It is heaven that is in him. The entire heaven is the throne of God. That is just where God sits. And when he stands up, he stands out of heaven. So this journey, huh, walking with God, is to God. That is why when you die, you continue with it. So there is no destination. So walking with God, don't look at heaven. Look at God. Your focus should be God. There's a tough question that was asked. This question is so tough that it will shake it will shake every believer. And the question is if the reward of serving God and working with God is hell, will you still serve him? So can you see the genuineness of your working with God should be tested with this question. Are you working with God because of heaven? Meaning if there is no heaven, you will not work with him. So the genuineness comes from wherever God is. I'm okay with him. It's just like falling in love with this girl. Wherever she lives, or rather falling in love with this man, wherever he lives, I go. I don't care because I'm not falling in love with him because of where he is, but because of who he is. That is the essence of working with God. And that's the journey to destination. The destination is God. So when we die, we don't really die. We have just entered into God. We have just reached our destination. Praise God. I'm going to talk about death, heaven. I think it should be the last thing. But let me mention something. You see, there's the natural fear for death. It takes maturity in faith to be able to conquer it. You are afraid to die. It takes maturity. Gradually, you'll be overcoming it. Overcoming it. That's why when you see our fathers in faith, it gets to the point that they are not afraid to die. Kenneth Huggins died around his family. They were singing his favorite theme for him. He died peacefully, loving it. Do you know why? I'm in love with you. I'm in love with Sharon. But Sharon is in Lagos. I've never been to Lagos. She's in Lagos. I'm in Joss. I've never been to Lagos. If I've never been out of Joss, for instance. Okay? But we're in love, so we communicate. What are we doing? We have a relationship. She's my girl. Right? That's the relationship. Right? Then we have fellowship, which is communication. We talk. So, how are you now? Hey, we'll talk. Hey, we'll send each other gifts and all that. Right? Now, when she tells me to come to Lagos, I will not be afraid. I've never been to Lagos. But I'll enter the car knowing that I'm going to go and see my lover. I'm going right away to go and say, I'm not going to be afraid. I will land and ask, where is this venue? Where is this? I will get to a house and there will be a gate. I will knock at the gate. The gate man will come. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. I'm not afraid of him. I know there's someone I have fellowship with. And I will tell the person, I'm here to see this person. They will say, just go right away. I will go to the main door and knock. The door will be open to me. And behold, I will see Sharon. It's the same thing with death. When you walk with God, you will not be afraid to die. Because you know that you are going to God as their destination. You get it? That's walking with God. And that's why as minister, you must know this thing. You must know you are a minister. You see why ministers, our fathers, are not afraid of death. 
They are not. I, I keep asking why this this guy is the way you see Bishop Edo is talking about. He's not afraid. Like well, was he dead? So, no, he's not. Sad. What is the secret? Praise God. So the major goal. Please get this. Don't don't be. If it's general church, you you are ministers. Okay. Don't ever forget this. General church, you tell them the benefit of working with God is that there's going to be preservation. God is going to preserve you, which is true. Okay. God is going to protect you, which is true. God is going to lead you and direct you, which is good. God is going to reward you, which is true. God will answer you. He will be done. Yeah, it's true. But you, the ultimate goal of working with God is that you get to your destination safe, and that is God Himself. Praise God. Are you getting blessed? Walking with God is a life journey. You take your life into him, which is the destination. Praise God. Mark chapter 6, verse 8. Mark. I'm sorry, please. Sorry, it's Micah. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly? To love mercy. Where is mercy? You see, the Bible is saying we should love you. To love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Walking with God requires humility. In fact, you cannot walk with God if you don't have humility. Because, you see, Ba, walking with God, do you know what walking with God is again? Look at it. Walking with God means you are heading towards same direction, not opposite. Same direction. Same direction. God cannot be going this way and you're going that way. So it takes humility to align to his will. Align to his direction. Praise God. It takes serious humility. Seriously. I have joy, man. Guys, I have joy. I have if I, I really have joy. Honestly. I have joy that I'm privileged and to be chosen by God to be doing this. I went to school. I studied. I should have been doing, I should have been following my, I should have been following my career. Yes. I should have been following my career. At very early um, time when I finished when I graduated, I started work. In fact, one of my first projects was upstairs. I built an upstairs for one of my clients. Had a very, we did a very complex, usually you will not be allowed to, to, to be the site engineer of such kind of projects if you don't have the experience. It was a multi-story building, car park. If you go to Abuja, what was um, um, CAC? Corporate, Corporate Affairs Commission, the headquarters in Abuja. If you go, you see the building by the side. You see a car. It's, it's, it's the story building for cars. I was one of the engineers that built it. As a matter of fact, I was the assistant site engineer. And the site manager. I was a site manager. I managed the entire construction there. And it was going on well. I, from there, I was going to go to Emo State. You know, the, 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 it was, you know, I you to me. And the salary was good. There was salary. There's monthly salary and weekly allowance. The weekly allowance alone is some people's salary. Are you getting me? Praise God. 
we have to abandon all that and do what we're doing today. If you don't have humility, you say, no God, Haba, I can't see my mates. And you see that they're driving cars. They have big houses. They claim to have beautiful marriages. That one, I lie. I have a very beautiful marriage. You know, you see it and then it will, it will, you know, then, and God will just put you in one corner and just, you, allow me to use in court this word, humiliate you. And that's what I'm going to see in the second and the fourth module. God will just break you. He will make you humble. Just because you need to work with him. You are seeing that? God will tell you that with all your money and everything, God will tell you you must marry that man that just finished primary school. Just because you work with him. He will humble you with humility. It takes humility to work with God. I'm making emphasis in this because you're going to be ministers. The, working with God means there will be a time that God will put in a position that will be humiliating. Humiliating. Not really humiliating like humiliating, but it's like, um, I don't know what word to use. He will put you in a position that it takes only humility to sustain you. God does not really humiliate, okay? No, 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 no. It's not an attribute of God to humiliate. He breaks you. But in our own definition, it's like humiliate. So it takes humility. Do you want to work with God? It takes humility. So it's better I say, God, really, I don't want to work with you. It's better you say that. Praise God. Praise God. His ways are not ours. Far by far. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 6. Are you guys blessed? Are you blessed? Father, we thank you. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Walking with God means obeying his commandments and fear him. That fear is respect. You respect him. You honor him. When you obey his words, you are seeing Deuteronomy? Give me 5 verse 33. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 33. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you that you may live and that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land we shall possess. So if you want to see other benefits, you can get them here. Preservation, long life. Okay? Did you see that? Psalm chapter 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. Praise God. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. As you are walking with God, He shines the light. He puts light on your way. You can't get it wrong. You can't. So how do I know that I'm taking step by step with God? He takes this step, I take this step. How do I know? I know it by his word. His word tells me that he's, he has turned left. Then I turn left. He has turned right. Then I turn right. And I see the road is clear. Amen. Praise God. Another thing. Let's look at another thing that is required of you to have um, working with God. Is working with God must be in, with, and by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews 
11 verse 6. And with that faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Earnestly or diligently seek him. So you can't, you can't even please him. It's with faith. Working with God requires faith. Because how can you be working with someone that does not exist? How? It's not possible. So you use faith to know that he's here. He's by my side. Let's walk. Honestly speaking, something happened to me. Remains small. I wanted to run away. I just want to like, I'll just, you just see me. You know there's this run of fear. They flee, that's the word. You understand? I will, go, I will run, flee out of this hall. Past the gate. People who know me will be calling me out. I say, let me test something. You know, this is, this is minister's conference. I say, Holy Spirit, I want to experience you closer. Closer. There's where I experience Holy Spirit. Okay. So, but Holy Spirit, I've heard this dude say, I want to eat. God, can you just whisper? In my ear, just honestly, I felt something as if it touched me. Then I opened my eye. I wanted to. <laughs> I, I, it's not really touch. It's not touch. It's not a physical touch. It's a, It's like sense. Like there's. I felt something, and it was here, not here. Here, I was standing like this, and I heard it. Like, and I knew that there is a being specially. So the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. In advanced class, we we'll deal. One of the things we we'll deal with is Holy Spirit. How to operate with and in Holy Spirit. You need to know how. To, see, Holy Spirit doesn't do things for you. I hope you know. No, Holy Spirit don't doesn't do anything. But Holy Spirit cannot make a way for you. Holy Spirit cannot. Uh, no, no, no. The work of the Holy Spirit is to help or to comfort. You must be doing something, then he will help you. That's why it's compared as the woman. That's why the Holy Spirit is a she. It's like a, like the she, rather. Do, do you get? You can't be married. You can't marry a woman and you want her to be a helper. What are you doing that should be a helper to you? So the same thing, Holy Spirit. You must be doing it. And then you cannot, you get to a point and you say, Holy Spirit, help me do this. Then he will help you do it. So if you are doing nothing and you ask Holy Spirit, help me, he will help you do nothing. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You help you do nothing. That's why you will not do anything. Praise God. Are you getting that? Walking with God requires absolute faith. You are not seeing him. How can I walk with him when I cannot see him? I cannot touch him. But what gives you access to seeing him and walking with him is faith. He is not here, but I know with total conviction that he's here. He's in this room. He's with me. He speaks and I hear. I distinct. I distinguish his voice from others. I know he's the one talking to me. You cannot function as a minister without faith. What will you tell the people that God says? You can never stand here and say, God says, he's not working with you. You don't have faith. Until you have faith, you walk with him. Then you can stand as a minister. A singer was singing. These are guys that no ministry. He was singing, and the spirit of God told him, You see that woman in red, go and touch her. Just be singing, so go and touch her. And he was singing, he was moving, people were doing, he got to her and just touched her and went back. And she received her healing. She received her healing. Absolute faith. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 
For we live by faith, not by sight. Let me show you something. Mark chapter 10, verse 52. Mark 10, 52. The story of Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Please, look at this thing here. Jesus did heal this guy, right? Was he a blind guy? Huh? He see his sight blind. But look at it, guys. Look at it. Let me go a little bit deep. Do you know that Jesus did not heal this guy? It was the guy's faith that healed him. Jesus did not heal him. It is not always that Jesus is the healer. At times, it is the faith inside of you that is the healer. Praise God. I see that. That's mighty tool. Mighty tool. So to me, this is a description. God designed this special tool called faith. He opened us and put it inside. And he said, go. Anytime you need something that you cannot do it by yourself. Use it. It's inside of you. And that is called faith. So this blind man has been working with his healing inside of him for years. For years, the healing tool is inside of him. And that's faith. All this time, this guy, he has been working with the solution inside of him. Praise God. I will conclude by telling you things you do when you work with God. Number one. John chapter 14, verse 26. John 14, verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, can you see the helper? Compared as the woman too. Like the woman, she's a helper. Huh? Whom the Father will send in my name. That's Jesus speaking. He will teach you all things. And bring to remembrance all things that are said to you. Number one. It's supposed to be study the Bible. I'll just tell you, read the Bible. Read the Bible. And I'm going to explain why this verse is important. So things you should do when working with God. I said number one is what? Reading the Bible. Right? Study the word. Listen to the word. Please, guys, let me tell you something about reading. I'm talking to you as ministers. You see, anytime you want to read the Bible, don't go with the intention of understanding. That's not your role. Don't go with the intention to memorize. Just go, you see, your major role, your duty is to read. There's a special helper called the Holy Spirit. His work is to teach you what you read. Bring to remembrance, to remembrance what you have read. Until you get to this level, you can never understand the scriptures. It will be like a literature book. That's why reading the scripture takes humility. You go, you don't know English. You don't know how to read. But your duty is to carry that book, open it, put your eyes on it and begin to read. Then there is a special helper. He will begin to interpret the words. Begin to bring to meaning each word that you read. And that's working with God. Can you see many of us have been reading the Bible, but we have never really been reading the Bible? That's how every other person can read the Bible. 
You must empty yourself. You go open. So when you go home, open to John 3.16. Now, don't you see when you go with the intention that you want to understand, ba? Already you have understood the scripture, so there won't be any understanding. But you just go empty. Holy Spirit, I'm here to read this verse. Teach me. Teach me. Open yourself. Teach me. And then you begin to read for God so love the world. In fact, that word, for God, and God will just give you a revelation that for God, just that. Are you getting me? And usually it's not the amount of what you read. So, let me give you Everyone knows this one now. Joshua 1 8. Let me give it's still under reading the scriptures. Now, guys, this is what I want you to do. Many of you don't do this. It's called meditation. Under reading the Bible, put meditation. Let's fall under that. Although they, they are all correlated, okay? Meditation. The meaning of meditation is this putting all your mind. Focus on one thing. That's the meaning of meditation. Did you get that? All your mind, you focus it to one thing. Can you see how many of us meditate on the problems of this world? Can you see how depression comes? We actually meditate about the problem. It's meditation that we do. It's always in your mind. You are in the church, is your mind. You are just your mind. That's meditation. We're actually meditating the problem. And guess what? As we meditate, the problem is magnified. Anything you, ma you meditate magnifies. You see now? Can I get it wrong? So, guess what, guys? You don't need many. Pick one verse. Pick one verse of the scripture and say, I'm going to meditate on this verse for one month. I'll be reading this verse. I'll be saying it again. I'll be thinking it. I'll be, I'll be mentioning it. I'll be reading it. I'll be looking at it for one month. This verse. As you're doing that, that verse becomes magnified in your life. That's the meaning of meditation. We don't meditate. Many singers, guys, all the singers, you guys should listen to me. Many powerful singers that you know get their songs for meditation. They pick a verse, begin to meditate, 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 meditate. And all of a sudden, a strange and mysterious melody comes with it. And then is defining it. It's defining it. Before you know it, it becomes a song. That's even benefit of meditation. Do you know you can just say, do you know you can just pick this? Uh, um, 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 verse, they say, he's the one that gives us uh, power to make wealth. Alright? You may tell him, he gives him power to make wealth. He gives him power to make it. You are meditating. That's all in your mind. Okay? This guy will call you. Hey, Roy, how far? Fine. I say, okay. Give me power to meditate. I have the phone call. Okay, hello. In fact, in some, some cases, you make a mistake. Instead of saying hello, you say power. <laughs> <laughs> Meditate because it has occupied you. Yes. All of a sudden, you begin to see the power. All of a sudden, you see that that's power to make wealth. All of a sudden, that little thing that is there that has been power will be magnified. And then you begin to see, wow, I have power. That is meditation. Meditation magnifies. Instead of meditating, you'll be meditating on the problems of Nigeria. How can you, oh my, you'll be very foolish to be doing that. You sleep with APC or PDP in your mind. You'll be saying, what was it called? Um, inflation. Huh? <laughs> I saw this guy did one post. <laughs> You're the one, huh? Geographics, they increase their something they say inflation. Inflation is the reason. <laughs> yeah, an update. And I like that. That is it's beautiful. Multiply your people. It shows you are diligent. Informing your customers of your price increase means you are diligent. 
in your wives, you should do it. You honor them. Give them notice. Okay? You sleep with inflation in your head. I know the definition of inflation, but I refuse to understand it. Is it not the same guy? They asked him, they said, look at it, oh. they said, uh, they, I don't want to mention names, okay? That this is what, they've taken us out of, uh, what's it called? Recession. They take us out of recession. The guy said, I, I don't agree. Then they said, no, but there are the statistics. Said, I still don't agree. Then the guy insisted, he brought the statistics, this, 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 and he called uh, something bureau of what, what, what brought this the World Bank said this what well, these are the facts. Then the guy said, Yes, they can bring the figures, bring that. But as far as the life of my people are not changing, they're still in recession. It's not on, on facts, it's about the reality, what we're seeing. Praise God. Are you getting it? Meditation. That's walking with God. Require meditation. Do you know why guys sleep, sleep smiling when they're in love for the first time? Like the girl say yes today. You know you sleep with smiles. <laughs> guys sleep with smiles. Girls, I'm serious. You just see they're so they're just like and when they wake up, the first thing that comes to their mind is you. They're actually meditating the love. This, this, may, maybe we, we need to, in one of our teachings, we need to teach on meditation, the power of meditation. You see how meditation, maybe it's just one thing occupies you. You bring it back. You see. Praise God. Number two, prayers. Number two, prayers. You see, meditation is also prayers. Reading the Bible is all prayers. That's why I say they're all connected, okay? Please, don't differentiate them. When you're reading the Bible, it must be done prayerfully. It's God speaking to you now. Now, the first thing I must, the first thing I must, I must crush down, which I myself have taught you, but I've taught you in the general church, this minister's conference. So you hear, you, you think that I am actually contradicting my previous teachings. There's, there are stages you get that you see that this, there, there's what is called, what's it called? Um, they're called, um, what was it what was it called now? I, I can't remember. They, they, they are, but they, it's just because of the stages, the maturity. Okay? Are you getting me? You, you guys are getting me? So, let me crush this down. Prayer is not communication with God. If prayer is communication with God, then you will never have your prayers answered. So one of the reasons why prayer is not answered is because we see prayer as communication. Prayer is not communication. So you see, I've had people talk about communication, marriage, me and you. See, if you want your marriage originally to succeed, don't do communication. Communication is not it. It's not a solution. It's not what? No, it's not communication. It's not communication. So many people focus on the art and skill of communication. They excel in it, yet it's not giving them result. Have you not seen great communicators? I don't want to mention the one is in this country. He's, 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 see, you can insult him and abuse him, but he's one of the greatest communicators we have. I just read his article yesterday. Now, just, Jesus, this guy is too good. Just yesterday, I read his article. And it's very long, but I read the whole of it. Because this guy, this guy can choose words. He can choose words like... When you are, if, he's, if he's beefing you, are, if you are reading it, it will be hitting you. It's like he's giving you a punch. I'm not joking, no. The guy is so good. Like, to me, he's one of the best that we have. He's one of the best that we have in this country when it comes to the, he has studied yet he has failed two times in his marriage in fact he was accused of beating one of his wives they accused 
I don't say you should mention name. Like, it's so good. Are you getting me? So it's, so it's not communication. So please let this as a minister. Huh? Crush down this mentality that prayer is communication. What is communication? Communication is exchange of information. That's the meaning of communication. So I exchange information with you. Is that what you're doing with God? So what is prayer? Prayer is communion. Instead of communication, engage in communion. And I will tell you the difference between communication and communion. You see, that is why when you and your wife or your spouse engage in communication, you fail it. Communion is... That is why, see, I said what? Communication is what? The exchange of... Do you know that when you are, when you are getting everything right, you and your spouse will stay like this? Without exchanging information, you are just looking at each other. That's communion. And you are just enjoying the silence... You are enjoying the nothingness. You are enjoying the no activity. That's communion. So what is communion? Let me show you what communion is. Before I define communion, everyone look at it. This is the meaning of communion. Common union. <laughs> Common union. So when you add it, it becomes communion. It means you are united in common things. So what is communion? Communion is not sharing. It is the united, the binding, the togetherness, the oneness. <laughs> the oneness. So when you get, and look at the difference. Communication must, must distinguish between two it must, when you say communication, there must be two devices. There must be one day and one year. One gives, the other receives and decodes and gives back. But in communion, you are united in one. There is no two people. Did you get that? <laughs> so, prayer is not good. That is why in some cases, when you listen, it's breaking, it's crushing a lot of walls. That is why, in some cases, when you pray, ba, because it's communion, you just pray, you just pray, you just pray, you just pray, you just pray. Guess what? You will not. They say, I can't hear God, but God is not saying anything. Do you know what you, you guys are one? That's communion. What all you have seen is what God is saying. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the communion, not communication. So prayer is not communication. Prayer is communion. You are united in one. It is oneness. It's a mystery. So don't always be looking for answer from God and God must speak to you. No. It is only when it's communication that you must talk then you keep quiet and listen. Then he talks back. <laughs> That's communication. And prayer is not that. Praise God. You have seen that, right? So you see, that's why the other time I was talking about co communication. I know some of you are wondering, uh, why would this guy say communication is not? <laughs> Praise God. You see, com communion means my wife should be able to say, yes to this, even when I'm not present, because she knows I will say yes. That's communion. She doesn't need to wait. And No, she knows Roy will say yes. There's communion. That's what prayer is. Aligning yourself to God's will is prayer. When you know his will and you align to it, it's also communion. Because you commune with his will. That is how you become one. They cannot differentiate God's will with your will. They cannot differentiate it. They'll be wondering, ah, which one is this guy's will? Which one is God's will? You are so united in it, you become one. Are you seeing that? that I'm teaching you how to walk with God. Praise God. 
the last one of things you should do, there are many other things. Like here, you can talk about fasting. For lazy people, they'll say, today I'm fasting, so I'll not use phone. Then you'll be eating. You will eat, eat. They say, I'm not using phone. That's the, what, what kind of things that? Phone fasting. No, no, no. No. The most effective fasting is abstinence from food. Food. Fasting. Are you getting me? It's not an evidence that you are spiritual. No, no, it's not. Fasting is discipline. It's an art of discipline. You discipline yourself to have communion with God. Are you getting me? Look, guys, listen. No. That's why, man, when you fast, you have a problem. Right? You have a, I have a problem. God, I have a problem. What's it? Someone should give me an example of my problem. Okay. Okay. Of any problem. <laughs> huh? Kai, no. <laughs> so I'm poor. Right? Poverty. I'm poor. I need money. I need money to start business. Right? So, so um, I unfast and pray. God, I unfast and pray. Then I begin to fast. I fast. I fast. That fasting can never take you out of poverty. Never. It will never, never. In fact, if you are not, if you miss the principle, it will take you inside more poverty. Pro max of poverty. <laughs> what that fasting does is this. It makes you sensitive to God's leading of what to do. It makes, you see, your spirit man becomes so much alive. They are, um, what, what, what's it called? In, um, in mathematics, they are called inversely proportional. As this one is going high, the other one is going low. As this one is going low, it's going high. Do you get, do you get? Yeah. So, when your flesh, the more your flesh is dead, the more alive your spirit is. So don't ever think fasting solves problem. It helps in making your spirit man sensitive to the solution to the problem. Is that okay? Tells you what to do. There are many other things about fasting. I'm going to deal with fasting separately, not today. We need to look at fasting. Then we look at the place of not using phone. They call it phone fasting. I will not use my phone. Okay? It's still fasting. It's not as if it's not fasting, but the most effective is food. Because if you say I'm not going to use phone, right? You say I'm going to I'm not going to use phone, but you are eating. You are eating, you are just eating, you are seeing this one, you are seeing one. Your spirit man will not be sensitive still. But what makes your spirit man to become active and sensitive is food. Deny this flesh. The comfort your spirit man becomes alive. You're getting that right? Praise God. We are done. Come on, clap, clap, clap. <laughs> so let me take a question, then we'll take a break and then come back and do the nonsense. Are you guys blessed? Are you blessed? You are blessed? Your eyes are open. So, any question for me? Let me take questions. Okay, I need to say something, please. Yeah, no, please keep recording. Keep recording, okay? I need to say something, please, before we take the questions. Please listen. I, I've talked about what? Reading the Bible, which entails meditation. I talk about prayers, which entails fasting. I need to round it up with one. I'm so sorry. I think I need to do that. Uh, though these things will be dealt with separately on a deeper level. The other one is worship. Is it worship or worship? Worship. Or we're, we're here to worship you. 
Worship. Worship. Worship you. Now, let me say something. I'm not going to stay long in worship because I'm not dealing with the topic. Worship. Uh, I, I, we're going to do that separately by the grace of God. Look at it. Worship is gotten. This is worship. Worship is gotten from the word worf. W O R T H. Worf. Anything that you magnify its worth, you are worshiping. Anything you magnify its worth, you are worshiping. That's the art of worship. And I'll speak to dir directly to you, ministers. You can speak so well. You can teach so well. You can sing so well. You can minister so well. And when people say, wow, that's powerful. And then you magnify your self-worth. You are worshipping yourself. Let me tell you what God hates most. Do you know what God hates most? Let me tell you what God hates most. Idol. He's a jealous God. His glory must never be shared with any other. Worship is not singing. But singing can be worship. As a matter of fact, listen to me. As a matter of fact, here on a general level, hear this. Hear this and let this sing into you. Every single music in this world is worship. Every, every song that you know in this world is a worship song. Either they are worshipping money, worshipping woman, worshipping sex, worshipping a human being, worshipping themselves, or worshipping God, or worshipping money, luxury life. Every music, every song is a worship song. Every all the songs that you know, they are all worship songs. They are worshipping something. Are you getting me? So that's why I say music is worship. It's worship. But worship is not music. Are you getting me? Anything you give value to, you are worshipping. You give the highest value to, you are worshipping. When you walk with God, you honor him with the highest value. That is the worship. Have you heard sometime, I don't know whether you people know this. Um, I don't know, you people have done it. But you, during our uh, childhood days, uh, it was common. You are not allowed to point at the graveyard. If you point at the graveyard, they say you should bite it. If not, your hand. You guys, so you guys did all these things. <laughs> uh, if somebody is lying down, it's not good to cross sin. You see, what, what, they, what our parents were teaching us is to honor. They teach us to honor people. It's actually, do, do you get? They, they actually, all these are founded, they are rooted from the core values of our parents to honor. To honor. Anything you honor, you value, you are worshiping. You cannot walk with God without worship. That is why when you remove money and give out to God's work is worship. Many things are happening. You chose to come to church. That is worship. You see the worth of coming to fellowship with God as more than any other thing. It's called worship. I, I get to me. So worship must not come in the night and wake up and you start singing. No, it's one of it. So guess what I'm trying to say? It's very simple. What I'm trying to say is that 
our entire life is worship. It means also there is no time for worship. Every time is time worship. As simple as how you doing now? We give God the glory. That is worship. As far as you, you did something on Facebook and somebody say, and you say, glory to God. That is worship. So guess what? Worship is easy. It's easy. When you look at it as you put the worship song and it looks kind. But it's something that you can do. It means we can worship God every second, every time. And the reason why worship must be done is because, you see, you, the truth is you can't worship who you don't know. If you don't work with God, you cannot worship him. As a matter of fact, your worship is limited by the knowledge that you have about God. Yes. So people who go deeper in worship go deeper in knowing God. So when you see a man that they say this man is a worshiper, I think that's what they call you people, right? To so Sharon, worshippers. These people, they're worshippers. All these people that you see, they have very good knowledge of God. Very good. So it's easy to worship. Because the more you are knowing the person, the more you are seeing the person's worth. There's one guy, I can't remember his name. He's very, he's a Nigerian, Nigerian guy. They say this guy, the people around him, all, everyone is giving testimony. Don't they tell him to pray. That we want to gather, he say, okay, please, our brother, please stand up and pray. Don't even do it. Especially when you, you're looking at time. Is that guy start prayer? That's all. He cannot control it. That that's his biggest problem. He tried to work on it; he's not working. <laughs> so guess what? This same guy has died. Has died seven times and came back. He died near death. You go to like heaven and then and then God will bring him back. Me seriously. So he has this deep intimacy with God. So you tell him, brother, pray. And he enters. <laughs> Did, <laughs> are you getting me? So let me address something. You see all of you that you're looking at me. All of you that cannot pray for 30 minutes, especially in the night indicates the level of your knowledge about God. The more you know about God, and you say, let me pray five minutes, you say that five minutes is not enough. What? I'm just about to start. Because you have a wider knowledge of God. When the experiences of life begin to come, you see God's hand in it. When you enter into the place of prayer, all these experiences unite to make you have prayer with God. So when you open your mouth to pray, you know that you're an orphan and God has been faithful. So you're only talking about his faithfulness. You're just talking about his faithfulness. One time you wanted to fail and then he granted you favor. So you are finishing faithfulness. Then you enter, you remember favor. He favored that time. This God of favor. And all these things are coming. You see that 10 minutes is not enough. So the more you have the knowledge of God, it's easier for you to enter into worship, prayer with him for a long time without knowing. So what is your problem? You have limited knowledge about God. So your prayers will be short. Your worship will be short. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We give you glory for this session. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we just clap for Jesus? I'm done, truly. Any question? I'm supposed to finish one. So any question, please. I have three minutes. Question, so I'll go for a break. Question? I, okay, I understand. We are still digesting. It's still entering, right? Is it still sinking? Huh? Okay. So let me take one. Who again? 
two. I'll take only two questions on that song. Please give them the mic sharply. Uh, straight to the question. Straight to the question. Thank you, sir. Um, I was blessed by the teaching. Um, so there's this, um, there's this, I don't know whether I should call it a notion that, um, you know, people believe that um, gospel music should be um, more of, you know, only lifting up your hands and worshipping. Um, so I want to ask, can't your art be expressed, that is to worship God, in different forms in the music? How? Like we have different um, gen- genres of music, right? Okay. So I'm asking now, can't we explore these other genres in the music to worship God rather okay. than some specific genres that we believe are meant for, uh, for God? Thank you. Okay, good, good, good question. Um, did you call it gospel music? Huh? Ah, uh, <laughs> you are not that saying it now. This is not me. I hope you know that gospel, gospel music is a genre. Do you know? Gospel music is genre. There's gospel as genre music. Look, what makes a song a spiritual song? Is that what you're trying to answer? I, I did a thorough teaching on this. Try and get it and listen. Very thorough. Just I just stay on that topic and dealt with it. So get it and listen, okay? But um, what makes a song a spiritual music? Because the, the Bible talks about singing hymns and spiritual songs. So what makes a song spiritual music is the person singing it, not the song. If I'm a spiritual person, anything that comes out of me is spiritual. Do you get? So if I'm a spiritual person, if I sing about love, Spiritual, yeah, what's this guy's name? Solomon did a complete poem for his wife. He talks about breast. Your breast will satisfy you. You don't want to hear this in church. Imagine pastor come and say, let's go to some and then you see your breast will satisfy me. That, that, that's the, the, your breast will satisfy me. Sounds what? Sounds carnal. But it's coming from a spiritual man. It's, it's in the scriptures. You see that? So as a spiritual man, um, let God direct you and give you the sound. Whatever sound that comes out of you is spiritual. Daps, you guys know Apostle Daps. Apostle Daps presently, he has a very heavy project and he's a very wise man. You know, he's writing anthems. That's what he's doing. He has written for Edo State. He has written for Abuja. and He has written for uh, um, um, what's it called? Um, this what they call pilgrimage, pilgrimage board, Jerusalem. Something. Yes, yes. There's written. He knows that anthems don't die. He knows it. He knows it very well. Do you get my point? But that, that's Apostle Dabs, a very spiritual man, writing uh, songs to nations, anthems. Next question. That's not an excuse to copy the world. If you copy the world, and let me tell you the meaning of copy. Okay? Copy means imitate. You don't imitate. Because they are sounding like this, you must sound that way. You are imitating. You create your own sound. That's what I mean. I don't like you guys. I hate, I hate as a matter of a creative person, not as a spiritual person, from creative side, as a creative person, I hate seeing music ministers imitating dance steps in their music videos. Do you get my point? You are singing your music song. Which dance is, is popular? Like, eh? No, apart from leg work. No, no, I don't know this one. No, no, name the one that we should know. No, no. Azonto. Ah, God, like this Azonto. Do you understand? There's one time it went so viral like that. So then you are doing your music video, then you do the Azonto. 
How about that love for Christ's sake? Can't you create your own dance that can go viral? Please, just start. Please, question. Yes, sir. Mine is on the fasting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's go, let's go, let's go. Time, time, time. Yes, sir. I actually, uh, I do more about fasting. And Your uh, question is what? Yes, sir. My question is, uh, you talked about uh, the most effective uh, way of fasting is uh, food. Abstinence so, from food. Yes, abstinence of food. So, are you saying that uh, there are other type of fasting that are uh, generally accepted by uh, yes. God? Yes. Like, you, you can go without your handset. It's fasting. You can decide not to see anybody. You close yourself. You don't see anybody. That's also fasting. Now, what I would actually want to know, is that really part of uh, scriptural or something? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. 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 You see, fasting means you abstain from comfort. Anything that your, your flesh uh, gains comfort from, you deny it of it. It's fasting. Anything. It could be food. But food is in general, okay? It could be watching TV. Some people, do you know some people are so addicted to watching TV more than even eating? They only eat because they are hungry. So they stay away from that TV. So it makes them uncomfortable. They will try to kill and subdue that arch. That's fasting. So God bless you. See you exactly one time. We hope you had a wonderful time listening to the message. For prayers, counseling, and other inquiries, please call the number 80 65 Seven eight three four two seven. Have a great day.